Now we're ready to look at humoral and antibody mediated immune response. This is just one of the two branches of the adaptive immune system. We'll look at cell mediated immunity in the next video. So here we're talking about B cells and antibodies. So first we're going to look at the activation and differentiation of B cells and we'll also look at antibody functions. So let's start first with sensitization of the B cells and their activation. Now B cells will stumble across um, some antigen and that's in the, shown here with an epitope sticking out and it has the B cells have antibodies stuck on their surface and we'll get to what those are, antibodies are doing there in a little bit but just these are receptors that are going to bind to the epitope of a particular pathogen um, then the antigen is brought into the cell so at this point in time the cell is kind of like um, Steve Rogers of Captain America fame before Captain America became Captain America he was this weak kind of guy who had a heart of gold wanted to do good um, but he just didn't have the oomph the strength the size behind him to be able to do any uh, fighting in our war and so right now this sensitized B cell is kind of a Steve Rogers now this this Steve Rogers then is going to bring in that antigen and process it and then stick it on its um, MHC class 2 just like it's doing like an antigen presenting cell would do and so still at this point he's Steve Rogers okay we haven't changed anything he's still sensitized he just doesn't have that strength behind him to do anything so um, until a helper T cell comes along he's kind of stuck in this in this Steve Rogers phase he's sensitized but can't do anything so now the helper T cell comes and binds to this MHC class 2 and the antigen that's sticking there and in response to that it's going to release a cytokine now this cytokine is going to stimulate or activate I should say the B cell and that's going to convert the B cell to Captain America now he's got the oomph and the strength behind him to really go and after these pathogens and so Captain America is going to go off and either become plasma cells or he's going to become uh, what are called memory cells. Now memory cells just stick around and wait for the next infection. Um, they're not really going to do anything. Whereas plasma cells start becoming uh, producing antibodies. And antibodies are, are, are weapons against um, foreign pathogens. Now let's look at what antibodies are and how they're structured so we can get a better idea of what they're capable of doing. So here's an antibody. He's kind of a Y shape, sometimes he's a T shaped structure. He actually has four chains um, of protein. We've got two light chains shown in green and two heavy chains shown in blue and they're just longer so therefore heavier versus shorter and lighter. Within each of these chains, there's a constant region that's in the lighter colors of the green and blue. And then there's a variable region on the tips of our Ys in dark color for both the light and dark chain. Now the constant region is just that, it's constant. That is for any class of antibodies, the constant region is exactly the same. It's the variable region that varies by um, its binding site with the pathogen it's it's programmed um, to bind with so in other words the variable region will vary depending on which anti or which pathogen this antibody is supposed to attack so it may have one variable region for a staph bacteria another variable region would work and another antibody for an E. coli and a third variable region on another antibody would be good for strep, that type of thing. So again, it's these antigen binding sites that vary within the variable region and that allow it to bind to only one particular pathogen or basically epitope or antigen. Um, whereas the, the constant region is the same for any particular antibody within any class. Now the classes of antibodies are shown here in this slide. There are five classes of antibodies that are listed over here. IgG, IgD, IgE, IgA, and IgM. I have no idea why they picked those letters. Pretty obnoxious if you ask me. Um, but if you look, it does spell MAJ, although I got the G and the 
D and the E in the backwards, but the dust spell match to remember the five classes. Um, IG stands for immunoglobulin, so immunoglobulin G, D, E, and so forth. Now let's look at each one of these and see what they do. The IgG has a Y shape to it, just like what we saw before, so we refer to it as a monomer shape. It's the largest of the classes. It's also the main antibody um, of the secondary immune response. So it's basically the one that's going to give us our immunity to disease. It can also cross the placenta. So this is the guy that's um, guilty of causing hemolytic disease of the newborn when we talked about that in blood typing. Um, it also can activate complement and um, most of, again, it's the largest class, it's most of the antibodies are IgG, like 75 to 80 percent of all the antibodies in your body, in your blood, are going to be IgG antibodies. Um, the second class are the IgDs. These also have a monomer shape. It's just the constant regions a little different from the IgGs. These are the guys that are attached to the B cells that we saw in the previous slide. Um, they are permanently attached there. They don't do anything else but act as receptors for B cells and help with the activation of those B cells. IgEs are another class of antibodies that also have that monomer shape to them. These are the guys I mentioned before when we talked about mast cells, and there's an IgE antibody attached to the mast cell after you've been exposed to an allergen. So these are the guys, they're guilty of, of allergic reactions and of course help with instigating or starting inflammation. Then IgA's, now IgA's structure is a little bit different. It's called a dimer and basically it's two Y's with their constant regions butted up against each other. So you can see that two Y's on each side here. This is the one or the antibody class that you find most commonly in saliva, breast milk, colostrum, which is basically what um, a baby gets when nursing for the first couple days until the milk actually comes in. It's a very rich, nutrient-packed, um, in a sense, milk product. And then uh, you find IgA in tears as well. Now it prevents attachment of pathogens to epithelial cell surfaces, its idea, uh, and again, so it's kind of in those things we secrete to keep stuff away from epithelial surfaces. Then IgM is the last one. IgM has a pentamer shape to it. Notice it's five Y's stuck together at the base of their Y's. And this is the one that's released on uh, primary, one with a zero is shorthand for primary immune response. Now, in this case, um, we can actually look for and measure the amount of IgM in circulation, and that can help us diagnose if the person's sick due to a first exposure to some pathogen, they're going to have a high number of IgM antibodies in their blood. Um, this guy is also the one that's guilty of cross reactions when we do have incompatible blood types. So remember, if you look back at that glutination slide that had a um, antibody binding up the red blood cells to show glutination, he had a pentamer shape to him. He looked like a pentagon. And then last, of course, the IgMs can activate complement just like the IgGs. Now, what do the antibodies actually do? Well, they don't actually do any killing directly, but they enhance the effects of um, phagocytes and help in leading to cell lysis from complement. So we can see the things that they're doing here. One of the things they can do is neutralization. Neutralization refers to neutralizing binding sites of bacterial toxins or viruses that would normally enter or injure cells. So the cell basically, or the pathogen, loses its toxic effects because all of those sites that would normally bother your cells are blocked by the antibody. Also, it, the pathogens can't bind to receptors on tissues and cause cell injury since, again, all those binding sites on the bacteria are being blocked by the antibody. Another thing antibodies can do is cause agglutination, like we saw with cross-matching blood. 
um, the antibody binds to antigenic determinants on more than one um, antigen. And again, we see that we saw it with uh, blood types in the picture here showing that what we can do with bacteria and with the bacteria all glutinated up and bunched up, they can't function properly. A third thing antibodies can do is cause precipitation. If an antigen is normally dissolved in plasma, it's hard to, for a phagocyte to grab it and deal, deal with it. So what the antibody does is binds to the antigen and causes it to come out of solution or precipitate. And that way it makes it easier for the um, macrophage or, or neutrophil to grab it and engulf it. And then finally, it's going to activate complement. I said with IgG and IgM that they um, activate complement and then complement leads to the formation of lesions with those membrane attack complexes and the cell bursts because now it basically has been shot with a bullet putting a hole in its side so it's going to cell bleed to death so to speak. So antibodies again never really directly kill anything but they enhance um, other things. So either by binding or neutralizing the antigen or the, yeah, the antigen or agglutinating it or causing it to precipitate can enhance phagocytosis and of course activating complement leads to cell lysis. So in summary, if we look at the processes going on here, we'll start over here. Let's say we have this invading microbe and it has some antigens associated with it. Those antigens are going to bind on that IgD antibody that we find on the outside of the plasma, of, excuse me, of the B cell. The B cell then is going to bring those anti antigens in and process it. So now this guy is sensitized. And here he's going to present the MHC class or present the antigen on its MHC class 2. So now we've got Steve Rogers. We've got a sensitized B cell that just doesn't have the oomph to do anything about the pathogen it found or the antigen it found. It needs a helper T cell to kick it into um, Captain America. And this process up here we'll do in the next video lecture, but the basic idea is this helper T cell, once he's activated, will bind with the MHC class 2 of the B cell, and by secreting cytokines, particularly interleukin 2, that's going to turn our sensitized Steve Rogers cell into Captain America. That is, the cell is going to proliferate and replicate and split either into memory cells so that it can remember this pathogen and deal with it in a future date or he's going to become a plasma cell and this plasma cell starts producing all kinds of uh, antibodies that will then attack the antigen or the bacteria and help destroy it. So that ends our video lecture on antibody mediated immunity. We'll now concentrate on T, um, T cells and cytotoxic T cells and how they are responsible for cell-mediated immunity.